By now, you should be familiar with what a photography workflow is and how Lightroom works. So in my case studies here, I'm gonna show you a couple different things. First, I'm gonna take a wedding, or at least a part of a wedding that I've shot, and import it into Lightroom, go through my workflow as far as culling, as far as selecting images, and doing my initial edits, just so you can kind of see what that's like. Then I'm gonna take another image and go through a full edit of one single image so you can see how I use Lightroom and all of its different tools. Now I've already showed you a little bit of my workflow in previous sections, but this is gonna be a lot more in depth and should give you a really good idea of how I use all of the different features of Lightroom. So let's go ahead and dive right in here. So what I've got here, I have all of my images uh, from this wedding that I'm gonna import in this folder that's already on my hard drive. And the reason I do that, right now at least, is just to make things easier and faster. I don't wanna have a separate memory card that I use. So I have this separate folder on my hard drive. Think of it as the same thing as a memory card. So if you remember from the previous section about importing images, I mentioned how I have folders already set up that I import all of my images into. So what I'm gonna do is go over here in my sample hard drive and we're just gonna create a new wedding. So I'm gonna copy this folder. So Command D on a Mac, and I'm gonna rename it uh, 2015 10 17, because their wedding was October 17th, and it's Laura and Sam. And so now I've already got their folder structure set up here. So I'm gonna put these in the wedding folder down in the raw, and select all these just like they're on a hard drive and drag them over here and those are gonna start copying. So once those are done copying, we'll come back and I'll show you how I import them into Lightroom. Now that everything's in my raw folder, I'm gonna go ahead and import them into Lightroom. And one thing I wanna point out, I do have a fresh catalog opened up here in Lightroom, so it's not my old one with all my working copies from uh, the different shoots I've done this year. So this one, you won't see anything over here, and it's just basically for cleanliness and simplicity's sake. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import these into Lightroom by pressing Command-Shift-I on a Mac, and that pulls up the import dialog. And I know I put those on my desktop and you can see here it's already drilled down through to that raw folder. So I'm gonna click on that. And that brings up all of the images I wanna import. Now I do wanna point out that I have a preset import that I apply to every single image once it's imported into Lightroom. And you can see that right here under the uh, apply during import develop settings, I have this quick fix normal light. So I go ahead and apply that to everything. I also have my metadata applied automatically, my copyright information, and then I'm gonna do a few keywords on here that I always do. So this is Wedding and Denver. So once those are applied, I'm going to go ahead and import. And so now you'll see they'll start to pop up in here. And as it imports everything, it's applying that, that quick fix to each image. It's applying my copyright information to each image, and it's applying those keywords to each image. So it's a real time saver if you can do any of that on import it speeds things up a whole lot and makes your life a lot easier in Lightroom. So now that those are all imported, the next thing I do is I go through and I apply lens corrections to big batches of images. And I'll show you how I do that. So I go into the metadata and with that, don't forget, I can go ahead and filter down through all of the different lenses I use. So you can see those here. I have a 20 millimeter, 35 millimeter and 85 millimeter. So what I do is I go ahead and click on the 20 I, it shows me just those images. I select those by pressing Command A to select all. And then I go in here in my saved presets and I do have a corrections folder that I've made. And these are all the different lenses that I've shot or corrected or worked with. So this is my 20, mil, 20 millimeter 1.8. And I just click on that. I go ahead and go to the 35, select all, go into my presets and in corrections, I've got my 35. And so what's that doing? You can see the thumbnails here. You can, it's basically correcting a little bit of the vignetting. It's correcting any distortion that's there. But these are custom presets that I made. These aren't Adobe's presets. So I didn't like all of the vignetting correction. So I went ahead and dialed it back a little bit so it removes some of it, but not all of it. It's a look that I really like, but I do it to every single image once I import it. So here's the last batch. I have my 85 millimeter and I go into corrections go down to my 85 and you'll see how much that actually changes each of these thumbnails. They look a little dark right now, but when I, when you see the uh, vignetting get applied, it brightens it up considerably. So now that I have all of those lens corrections applied, I'm gonna go ahead and close this uh, metadata filter cause I don't need that anymore. And I'm gonna select all of my images and build previews again. And what that does is it goes ahead and takes all both of those presets 
the quick fix and my lens corrections and it applies them to all of the images, rebuilds those previews. So once those previews are built, I'm ready to start editing. So now that my previews are built, it's time to go ahead and start organizing my images. So the first thing I do is I always put them into a collection. So I use collections. I don't sync my Lightroom catalog with my hard drives because as I explained earlier, I keep all my JPEGs and it would eventually create too much clutter. So what I do is I rely on collections. So I'm gonna go ahead and select everything. And when I do that, I'm gonna create a new collection and it's gonna be called 15. 10, 17, Laura, and Sam, and I'm gonna put that inside my collection set weddings. So when I do that, all 179 images that I just imported are now in this collection set over here. No new files were created on my hard drive, nothing moved anywhere. So basically all that happened was we have this new collection over here for organizational purposes. So now that everything is in there, I can go ahead and start my culling process. And the way I do that, now that I have these previews, I can quickly go through my images and see which ones look good and which ones look bad. Now, just a quick note, some of these images might look a little bit underexposed and I did that intentionally. I didn't want to overexpose either her dress or the background because it's all fairly light colored. So I wanted to make sure I had enough information to work with without losing any of my highlights. Another thing, I shoot my camera with a fixed white balance. I set the Kelvin and so it doesn't change. So the white balance in some of these, these images might look a little bit cool. And that's something we're gonna work with later once we get to editing the images. So let's go ahead and start the culling process here. So the way I cull images is I select groups of them and I look at them all at the same time. So you can tell these first seven images look really similar. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit tab and get those panels out of here. And if I select those seven and hit in, I can look at them all at the same time. And you can see these are all pretty much the exact same composition and expression. And I only really need one of these. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick one. Let's say this one looks pretty good. And I use flags for all of my, my culling and for my selections. So I don't use colors, I don't use stars. Those all come later in the process. Right now I'm just flagging the ones that I wanna use. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit a P and that's gonna add a flag there. And I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next set of images, compare these, and let's go ahead and select this one here. So we just keep on doing this. We kind of just move through uh, images that look kind of similar. Uh, let's go ahead and pick this one. And another way you could do it, uh, if you wanna just go ahead and go through, you can quickly say, okay, that's good. Uh, let's see, I don't like any of those, that one's okay. And you can just kind of jump through quickly, there's your bouquet. And with something like that, if I wanted to say, well, let's see, I have these two images, one with a bouquet, one without. If I select both and compare them, well, I don't really like the way this one looks without her bouquet. So I'm gonna go ahead and unselect that and just keep this one here that has her bouquet. So we can keep on moving through. We have that, uh, let's see, that one looks pretty good. And you can see that the process is pretty repetitive. Now we get to a couple with them, with the two of them, and let's compare a little handful of similar images here. And I really like this one where he's kissing her forehead. So let's just go ahead and do that. Now you'll notice I'm doing this all pretty quickly. I don't even have a mouse. I don't use these menu commands up here. All I have is my keyboard and my trackpad. And I do work exclusively off of my uh, laptop. So I'm pretty used to it, but it works for anything. If you have a keyboard and can learn these shortcuts, it will make your life a whole lot easier. So. Here I see I've got a, actually a really blurry image and I don't want that. So if I hit an X, it's gonna set that as rejected and it disappears. It just completely goes away. Uh, another thing that's actually made my culling process a lot faster is realizing that I don't have to look closely at every single image and I don't have to pick one from every single set. So if I don't like any in here, I don't have to pick any of these. I can just move on to the next set and call it good. Uh, if you, you know, it takes a while to kind of get a little confidence in yourself making selections like this. It doesn't come naturally. It does take a little bit of practice, but with practice comes speed. And as soon as you get faster at this, you're going to be amazed at how quickly you can move through a large number of images and uh, make your life a whole lot easier. So we're just about done with these. We're getting towards the end and I'm just going to pick a few more really quickly here and we'll move into the next section of this entire process. Okay, so just to speed things up, I'm just gonna kind of skip through some of these. We'll pick a few more up here, maybe out of this set, because these look kind of cute. And let's go ahead and go with this one. 
and let's move down just a little bit more. Uh, we got to get some portraits in there. And this is a good comparison because we do have one close up and we have some farther away. So I'll probably pick one of each of these and these all look pretty similar. Let's just go there. And uh, now here's another one that we have the uh, videographer actually got in this frame because he was shooting them and I was just kind of like shooting behind him. So we definitely don't want that. So I'm going to hit X again to get rid of that. And I do want to point out the reason that disappears is in my filter up here, I have just the flagged and the unflagged photos selected. My rejected photos actually are not part of my filter. So if I turn that back on, you'll see that image shows up, but I want it to just disappear as soon as I uh, reject it. So I don't even have to look at it again. So we're going to pretty much call that good. Let's scroll down and I'm going to pick one of these with the crazy white balance. Cause like I said, I do shoot on a fixed Kelvin. So I want to show you how I go in and correct that as well. So now that I have my pics made, obviously if this were a real wedding, there would be a lot more images and I would do a full job. I'd go through, look at every single image and pick them all. But for simplicity and time's sake, we're just going to call it good right now. So the next part of my workflow is I go ahead and filter out the unselected photos. So now all I see are these flagged photos and these are all the ones I really care about. I might not ever, ever even go in and look at those other photos again. If this was a real wedding, I would call this good. And those other ones would probably just be part of a folder over here on the side that doesn't get touched, but I have them still. I don't delete them. I keep them. They're there if I need them, but for the most part, I've seen them and I don't look at them again. So my next step is going to be to build one-to-one -one previews. And I do that because I want to go through and I want to make sure all of these look sharp. I want to make sure everything looks good in these before I move into the final editing process but I don't want to build one-to-one -one previews for every single image that I shot at a wedding. That would just take forever. So I make my selections first based on these standard previews. And then once I have my selections, I build these one-to-ones and I check for critical sharpness. And if something's not sharp, that's when I go back into those other photos that I didn't pick and maybe check on a different one of those, see if it's any sharper, select it and just swap it out. So let's go ahead and build these previews. And once they're ready, we'll come back and start editing. So now that my one-to-one -one previews are built, it's time to jump in and check for sharpness. And I'm going to deselect everything. Uh, we told you a few other ways to do this, but another way you can do it is just to click in this gray area in the cell instead of on the image, and it will deselect everything. So the way I check for sharpness is I go in and I go ahead and just zoom in. And one thing to note, we do have a lot of resolution that we're working with here. So it's going to zoom in quite a bit. I shoot with the D810 and a lot of wedding photographers don't like that camera because these files are just huge. There's a lot of resolution here, but that also means that building previews takes a long time. They take up a lot of space. So just so you know, this building the one-to-ones um, all in one batch and not doing say 2000 at a time, but maybe doing 500 at a time, it's a huge time saver because they are big files that take a lot of time to build previews for. So let's go ahead and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to kind of quickly go through and check for sharpness on each of these. So this one looks a little soft, so I'm just going to unselect it. I'm not going to delete it and we'll just kind of zip through here. And what happens if, uh, if I happen to get lost in an image, if I hit the tab key, I can have my navigator over here and that pretty much shows me where in the image I'm looking at. So I can check, you know, if I want to make sure the flowers are sharp, I could do that, but I want to make sure her ring is sharp and it is. So I can zip through a few more of these. You know, this one is a little soft from motion blur, but I really like the emotion in this, so I'm going to keep it. And I would just kind of go through this entire process. I would check and make sure these are sharp, you know, zip through. And with these previews, it is a really quick process. And you can see how I can just move around in the navigator here. I can just kind of go through. And this one looks a little softer than the next one, so let's deselect that. And that's pretty much the process. We've gone through the photos that I had selected and we've made sure they're all sharp, looking good. So now we can go ahead and start developing these and I'll show you how that works. So now that we have all the sharp images selected, I want to point out something else. You can see these two images look different from these, even though I said that I have my camera set to a fixed white balance. Well, the reason is simply I was facing a different direction and the light coming from this direction was different from this one. So you can see the background in this looks a lot more blue than it does here. And it applies to all these images. So these down here, they're the same direction as these. So when I edit, I'm going to go ahead and do some batch editing for some quick fixes. So I'm going to do one edit for these, this set of images, and then one for this set of images. So let's go ahead and jump into this one and I'll point out a few more things. 
So you might notice over here, I already have some adjustments that have been made, and that's because of that quick fix import preset that I used. So it doesn't affect my white balance or my exposure, but it does affect some of these other sliders, as well as the tone curve. Now down here, you'll also see that I have some lens corrections that were applied, but that's not because of that quick fix uh, that I applied on import. Those are the ones that I applied independently depending on which lens that I use. And the reason I do that is because I don't really like Adobe's heavy-handed vignetting correction. I think it's a little too much. So if I go in here and I change this back to the default lens corrections, you can see how much of that vignetting goes away. And to be quite honest, I think the vignetting on this lens is really pretty. So I made my own custom. It, it adds a little bit back, but it does correct some. It's not as much as would be there uh, straight out of the camera. If I turn off the corrections completely, you can see how much is really there. So I kind of have a happy medium going on here. So anyway, those are the corrections that I have applied. And this is my starting point for pretty much every image. Once I import it, once I'm ready to start editing it, I start with these basic fixes already applied. So now I can go ahead and jump in and start editing this photo. So let's go ahead and start with exposure. I'm gonna bump it up just a little bit till everything looks good. And what I do is I always keep an eye on my histogram up here. And if anything starts clipping, then I'm gonna be careful of that. So that looks pretty good there. And I might dial down these highlights and bump up the shadows just a bit. And you can see this is already a significant difference in how this image looks. I think I'm gonna go ahead and bump up my whites just a little drop my blacks a bit, and I'm gonna call that good for now. I might go ahead and spend a bit more time if this was a, uh, an actual wedding, I was delivering these images to the clients, but I wanna move on to the more exciting stuff, which is batch processing. So I have these changes made to this image, and I have similar images over here. So over here we have the histogram, and if you remember, I mentioned how I use these numbers underneath. So on this particular image, I have these camera settings. My aperture is f1.4, and my shutter speed was 1 200th of a second. And if I look at this image, you can see I had the exact same exposure. So same ISO, same aperture, same shutter speed. So what I can do is I can copy the settings from this, paste them onto this image, and it should look exactly the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy, of course, using the keyboard shortcut. And I don't wanna copy everything. So this is one thing that's really important to note. When you go in to copy your settings, you don't necessarily want to copy every single thing and apply it. Because what if I copy all of these settings, including the lens corrections, and apply them to an image that I shot with the same uh, exposure, but with a different lens? Then I'm gonna completely change the way that image looks, and I don't wanna do that. So I really only try and select certain things. And this is kind of my default. I'll select white balance, uh, basic tone, all these different changes. I don't want any graduated filters in here. And I, I'll just kind of look over it. If anything else looks like I don't want to copy it, I'll unselect it, but this all looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and copy that, go to this image and paste. And you can see now these two images are pretty much the exact same. They look the same. They've got pretty much the, the same exposure and I'm happy there. So now let's go down to these other ones that have the same uh, white balance at least, and let's take a look at their exposure values. If I look up here in this cell, you can see there, are, or at least this one is the same, so I'm gonna paste the settings onto that, but you can see this one, I changed the shutter speed a little bit. So let's see what happens if I go ahead and paste onto that. Well, that still looks pretty good, so that tells me this one is a little bit dark. So I'm gonna have to go in here, uh, bump up the exposure just a bit more, and what I like to do is compare and make sure everything looks similar. So I select those two images. This one still looks a little dark, so I can use the uh, quick develop module over here and bump it up a little. And now that's too much. So let's just go in here and drop it a little bit. And that looks pretty good to me. So let's go ahead and paste these settings onto these last photos that were shot with the same settings. And so I'm gonna paste those. These should all be good, at least for a starting point. Now remember, I'm just kind of doing some basic corrections here. I'm not really fully editing these. I will go through and touch them all one by one, but I kind of want to get them all looking the same as far as exposure goes, as far as white balance goes. And that's all I'm doing right now is just working with my big batches of images because it's so much faster than going through one by one and editing each photo individually. So let's jump into these other ones that have this different white balance and see what we can do. Now I know my ex exposure settings are probably gonna be pretty similar, so I'm gonna go ahead and paste those in here, but I'm gonna change my white balance a little bit. This one's still, if you compare it to the image before, 
it's going to look a lot cooler. So I want to go ahead and raise this up. And one thing I haven't talked about yet are my presets. Now I have all of these presets that I've made for myself and I've found myself using the same settings over and over. So I just went ahead and created these and I have one for cool light. It's the same settings as my quick fix, but it has a different white balance and it has, I think some split toning applied as well. So let's click that and see what happens. And you can see that instantly corrected this. And now it looks really similar to this image before. So I use this a lot when there's cool light. I just have these two quick fixes. And the one thing you'll notice is it did reset all of my settings over here. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and get these back to what they were before I applied that quick fix. So if I go back here, I know all of these settings I was happy with. So I'm going to copy those, but I don't want to change the white balance and I don't want to copy the split toning, but I do want to go ahead and copy everything else. So let's copy those, go back here, paste those in here. And you can see it just did a little bit to, uh, to the shadows, to the highlights, gave the image a really nice look, but I didn't affect that white balance that I'd already fixed. And I do want to just show you the split toning has been applied in here. And that's one thing that I found is really powerful in working with white balance. If I can't get something looking exactly the way I want to, I'll go in and play with split toning. It's a really powerful feature of, of Lightroom that I use fairly often. So let's go back to the grid view here copy the settings from this image and I do want to include the white balance. I do want to include the split toning and let's apply it to all these cool looking images. Now the last image I have down here is this ballroom shot and you can see the white balance is way off on it. So before I even start messing with exposure, I'm going to go ahead and set the white balance. And what I'm going to do is just use the eyedropper tool. I'm going to zoom in here on one of the tablecloths and see if I can get a decent read and let's go back out that doesn't look too bad so i'm gonna change the exposure just a little bit maybe add a bit of fill light and uh, bump this up just a bit more pull the highlights down and we'll call that pretty good again if this was a real wedding i would go through the full editing process i would really spend a lot of time making sure this looked good but i just kind of wanted to let you know what it looks like uh, because i do fit shoot on a fixed kelvin setting with my camera that some images come out looking really, really orange. Doesn't worry me because I know I can fix that. And then once I've edited this one image, I can go copy those settings, paste them to all my other images from that same setting in that same light, and it fixes everything. So it's not really something that slows me down too much. So now I want to go ahead and wrap up this wedding and show you just a few more things that I do. So with every wedding, there's certain images that I blog and I go through and I just pick out some of my favorites. So if this was one of my favorite, favorite images, I do use the quick collection quite a bit. So I'm just going to add that to my quick collection and I'm just kind of going to quickly go through here and pick a few images to add to my quick collection. Uh, maybe that one. And what I'm doing with these is these are the ones that I'm going to put onto my blog. So let's just call that good. I have five images, obviously for a real wedding, it would be a lot different, but now that those are selected, they're still in my collection down here, but I also have them singled out up here and I use color labels on anything that I blog. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and set the color label on these to blue, which I can set down here. And now those are separated from my main images as far as their color label goes. They're still in the collection, like I said, but they are easily filtered out. If I hit this blue filter up here, then I just have those. And with that being said, I can remove them all from the quick collection. And by going up to the quick collection, I can select them all and hit B. Or one thing that I do quite a bit is command shift B and that removes everything from the quick collection. You can see it is back to zero here. So now that I have the images selected that I want to blog, I can go ahead and filter those out by making them blue. But I have to admit that I did make a mistake earlier. And when I created this collection over here and put it in this weddings collection set, I should have also made this into a collection set. So let's do that right now. And you'll see why in just a second. So let's create a collection set, Laura and Sam, and it's going to go under weddings. And now that I have that, I want to put all of my images in there as well as create a separate collection for just my blogged images. And to do that, I need to create a few new collections. One I'm just going to call photos and it's going to go in the Laura and Sam collection set. And I'm going to make another one that is the 
blog. And it's gonna also go in Laura and Sam collection set. So now I have two collections in the Laura and Sam collection set in the wedding collection set. So now I wanna put all of my images into this photos collection. And to do that, if I turn off the blue filter and turn off the flag, now I'm back to all of my images. Let's go ahead and put these in this photos folder and working out of here, let's go ahead and turn on my filter. Let's go ahead and just get back to flag photos. I have my blue ones selected. Those can go into my blog collection. Now you might notice that there's a difference here between my photos collection in this uh, collection set and this first one that I made. There's a difference of two images. And that is because I had those two that I deleted and when I selected all of my images, I didn't have this flag turned on to show deleted images. So if I go back in here and I turn off these two images or these two flags, you can see these two that I deleted. I marked them as rejects. Now, the way I deal with those, let's go ahead and turn these, fl these filters back on. The way I deal with rejected images, I always keep them until I've delivered a wedding because you never know any that I might've thought were bad if, I, if they were blurry, whatever the case may be, they might have turned out to be important. So I never delete anything until I give images to my clients, until they say they're happy with them. Then I can go back and any that are blurry, out of focus, uh, underexposed, overexposed, anything like that, I can go ahead and delete those. So once I've delivered my images, I go ahead and go into all photographs and just hit command delete on a Mac and you get this uh, message to delete from disk and I don't want those taking up hard drive space. So I delete those from my disk and hop back into my collection with all of the images and I can go ahead and sort back and now I just see my flagged photos. And that's pretty much it for my editing process. You can see that it's really designed for speed. So when I import the images, I apply that quick fix and then being able to just edit one image and paste those settings onto multiple images is a real time saver. That's why a lot of photographers, including myself, rely so heavily on Lightroom for quick editing of images. In the next section, I'm gonna go ahead and spend a lot more time editing just one image. And the reason I do that is for any given wedding, there's 50 to 60 images that I do this really detailed edit on, and they're typically my favorites. They're the ones I put on my blog, they're the ones I put on my website, and they're really the ones that I wanna show off and give my clients something just a little special. That's not to say that these images aren't important because they are. The client still gets all these, but they don't need a lot of work to look good. I always have a few personal favorites, and those are the ones that I really enjoy spending more time on. So let's jump to the next section, and I'll show you exactly how I do that.